Will LIV Golf and the LPGA join forces? With the Saudi-backed involvement creating controversy among the men's PGA Tour, which has been the story of the summer, and now the LPGA Tour might be next. How will LIV Golf impact the LPGA Tour? The LPGA was founded in 1950 and has weathered a number of business problems. However, the Saudi-funded LIV might cause major harm to the LPGA, the country's longest continuously operating women's pro sports league in the United States. Stay tuned to find out if LIV Golf and the LPGA will join forces, as the LPGA might not survive LIV Golf threats. But what exactly is the LPGA approach? What are they planning to do? And is there a possibility of the LIV Golf and the LPGA joining forces? Before we jump in, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like our video. Let's find out all the details. Greg Norman has left little doubt about his plans of LIV Golf to join the women's golf game. Recently, he told the Palm Beach Post, 100%. Drop the mic on that. We have discussed it internally. The opportunity is there. We've actually had one of the most iconic female golfers sitting in this room having a conversation with her. She absolutely loves the whole concept and is behind the whole concept. How would this impact the LPGA Tour? Unlike the PGA Tour and DP World Tour, it is quite clear that the LPGA pros are open to discussion of the fundamental changes to their sport. The LPGA has something else to say and has more of a wait and see approach. As the best teed it up at the AIG Women's British Open at the historic Moirfield, an undercurrent still exists which will potentially move the women's game in a different direction. It has been widely reported that the LPGA commissioner, Molly Marcus Saman, would be taking the phone call from LIV Golf. It's my responsibility to evaluate every opportunity, Saman told the Times in July. I would engage in a conversation if it would achieve our aim of promoting women's golf, but there needs to be input from players and sponsors. There's a lot of factors to consider before we do business with LIV Golf. However, it is still not clear whether the LIV CEO, Greg Norman, has approached the LPGA. There happens to be a number of different versions of stories. However, one thing is quite clear, and that is that both sides are interested in talking. We have discussed it internally. The opportunity is there. Norman told the Palm Beach in July. We've actually had one of the most iconic female golfers sitting in this room having a conversation with her. She absolutely loves the whole concept and is behind the whole concept. It is so shocking to see that both sides have taken things calmly, in a civilized manner, and are willing to listen and discuss a proposal that, in the end, could be good for everyone. The PGA Tour and its players still remain unwilling to entertain LIV, and as of now, the PGA Tour is being investigated by the Department of Justice for antitrust violations. And it is also reported that there will be a lawsuit with all 11 players led by Phil Mickelson, along with the ongoing defections to the LIV by some popular players. Even some of the women, when asked about the potential of a Saudi-backed investment, claimed that they were unwilling to discuss the possibilities, while suggesting that until a proposal is put forward, it is not worth discussing. It means these girls that work really hard during the week, finish 10th and get about 2,000 euros, 4,000 euros, will now get 14,000 euros. Laura Davies said of a small infusion of $500,000 to $1 million in future purses. All of a sudden, it becomes viable so I'm not going to say anything is right or wrong. It's just nice that finally the women's tour might get something. Davies has more than 70 worldwide wins in 32 years as a professional, but is still not comfortable with the origin of the money that could help both the players and the tours and seemed to answer that question quite easily. Do you put petrol in your car? Davies said. Don't buy anything that's made in China. Don't do this. Don't do that. Where do you draw the line in what you're up in arms about? I know the arguments. What can we do? We're just golfers. However, this is nor the most original response, according to the reporters. But when you see multi-corporations and sponsors on the tour being involved with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the PIF, Davies' view becomes quite understandable. The women golfers have generally played for smaller purses while scratching and clawing to make a living, and if such a benefactor emerges, the players must balance the benefits. I think our commissioner needs to be two steps ahead. Lizette Salas said, the commissioner just needs to be proactive in that sense. And of course, we'd want to have a say on what we're able to do. I think this is a tour that was made by players, and it's run by players. So I think it'll be beneficial to have a say. To this, the recently elected woman to the LPGA policy board, Stacey Lois, has a unique insight into the LIV issue. She still agrees with the solace that it is a player's tour and the players should still be involved in the process and that it is quite clear to her that there are partners and sponsors of the tour that still do business with Saudi Arabia. 
However, due to players like Davies, she also wonders where you draw the line. Lewis claimed that LIV golf has been discussed, even though nothing is quite firmly kept on the table. Ultimately, I would like to see it. If we do something with them, done in a way that is improving women's lives, Lewis said of any potential deal, I think that's something that our tour has done really well. Lewis then went on to say that if they could ever find a way to work with the squids and make people's lives better, then she is up for it. It seems that women have learned that they do not want to go on the same road as men. They also see the potential benefits. What is left is the proposal and negotiations. I believe our players would benefit from it, like higher purses, all that good stuff, Salas said. But ultimately, it needs to come down to negotiating and how we can benefit both organizations, as well as players. Meanwhile, the huge financial backing of the Saudi-backed organization could undoubtedly raise the profile, as well as the purses of the women's game. It does not come without any controversy. This is explained by Marku Saman's wariness at striking a deal with the Greg Norman-fronted group. For example, there have been a number of accusations of sports washing. While the Saudi link inspired a letter being sent from the 9-11 families to the LIV Golf's US players last month. However, Marku Saman appears to be keen enough in avoiding the same turmoil that has engulfed the men's game since the launch of the LIV Golf Invitational Series. This has included players signing up for the series, being suspended from both the DP World Tour and the PGA Tour, along with issues over the Ryder Cup participation. She then adds on to this by saying, Working together is always better than a fractured organization. The LPGA has been breaking down barriers for years and hopes to continue to do so. Saman's willingness to speak to the LIV Golf contradicts the comments made by Norman back in May, who was reported to have claimed that the LER LPGA Tour had rejected offers from them. Meanwhile, speaking at the Five Live Sports All About podcast, Norman had claimed that, well, we did approach the LET and the LPGA Tours with a substantial investment like the Asian Tour and we were rejected. So who is suppressing women's golf quite honestly? The LIV Golf are reported to be investing more than $300 million in the Asian Tour over the next decade as a part of an annual 10 event international series. And at the same time, the Saudi-backed investment in the women's game would not be without precedent, which is the state-owned oil company Aramco, the big money sponsors of the ladies' European Tours' Aramco Team Series. It seems that the profile of the women's game has grown considerably in recent years. However, it still seems to be lagging behind the men's game. Marku Saman also said, It's my responsibility to evaluate every opportunity. I would engage in a conversation if it would achieve our aim of promoting women's golf, but there needs to be input from players and sponsors. There's a lot of factors to consider before we do business with LIV Golf. What do you think will happen? And do you agree with Marku Saman? Will the Saudi-backed investment move be good for the future of women golfers? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. We would love to get to know your perspective on this matter. If you enjoyed this video, do subscribe to this channel and make sure to hit the bell icon to get the latest golf video updates. Thank you for watching.